so we're talking about the entrepreneurial educator, and that's about excellence, and it's about winning. You see that fellow up there? Guess who that is? That's me. Um, I think it was 1977. I was, at the time, going to the High School of Music and Art, which used to be on 135th Street in St. Edward's. And so I went and applied for a job, and the only job that they offered me was the midnight to eight shift. And of course, the guy who offered it to me thought I wasn't gonna take it. And I immediately said, yes, I'll take it. But what you're looking at there is me running a business. Because I ran a business from midnight to eight in the morning. So from midnight to eight in the morning, I worked in a restaurant all night. And then at eight o'clock in the morning, I changed my clothes, it was on 125th Street. Changed my clothes, walked the 10 blocks to 135th Street, then I went to school from eight to three, whatever that was. And then after school, I took the train to Brooklyn and grabbed a couple of hours of sleep. And then I got back up to get back to work at about 11.30 so I could start the midnight shift. Now I did that for four years. And I can tell you that there are times of, you know, times in the late 70s that I do not recall at all. <laughs> there are people who will say to me, well, don't you remember we did this, that, and the other? And I said, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't recall that. Um, there are times I would be so tired that I would wake up and I'd be in another class. And then when I was in college, in the second year of college, I remember one morning getting ready to go to school, commuting to school. And I looked into the mirror and I thought there was smoke coming uh, from my bedroom. And I thought, oh, what's this now? I turned around, I looked in my bedroom, and my mattress was on fire. At the time, we had moved uh, to Queens from Brooklyn, and my mother and I were in the house alone, and she said, look, there's no way you're gonna be able to put this fire out. We have to get out of here. So we left the building. Hundreds of people filed out of the building that morning. It was a cold winter morning. Uh, I wound up uh, going to visit with a friend of mine because I actually came out in my pajamas and I went to him to get some clothes. And when we came back to the apartment, everyone had left. The super would not let us back in the apartment, um, but we insisted that he let us in the apartment. And when I went in there, I was completely shocked. Now I was shocked because what I saw was an apartment that was burnt down to the brick. Everything that I recall before I left that morning was gone. The advantage that I had in that situation was that I had been for years reading about how to become better. And in fact, I got a job on Wall Street two weeks after my fire because one of the parents of my friends said, wow, you know, we'd really love to have you on, in our firm. So the point I'm making to you is that even in the midst of challenges, what you do and how you focus on what you do really matters. And so I want you to think about how busy you are and all the things you have to do and how complicated it is and say to yourself that I have to win anyway. You have to win anyway. And you have to become excellent anyway. The question is, what does it mean to be an educator today? Find a way to look at what you're doing and say, okay, how do I respond to this shift that's taking place? People are more real-time than ever before. They are more entrepreneurial because they expect certain answers that they didn't have in the past. They expect you to respond. They expect you to modify even what you do to comply with them now. They expect you to move quickly. They expect you to be dynamic, and they expect you to feel youthful as an organization. No one wants to deal with an organization that they feel has passed its time. So excellence and winning is, is both about being broad, and it's about being specific. It's about broad and being specific. think of some big ideas and some daily actions that you are going to take to elevate yourself and to elevate this organization. So say with me, big ideas. Big ideas. 
say daily actions. Daily actions. If you're serious about this, you'll be emphatic about it. What would happen if someone said to you that your life depended on big ideas? What would you do? You'd come up with some, right? You'd come up with some. So there's a big challenge ahead of you. And one of the challenges that you face right now is that, you know, there's a lot of people in your field looking at new ways to be better at what you do, to serve young people better, to come up with better solutions, to pinpoint what's really going on in a young person that has developmental challenges, and to come up with new possibilities and approaches. And you can't do the same thing you've always done. You have to be aware of the new thinking. So excellence and winning is, is both about being broad and it's about being specific. It's about broad and being specific. It's specific in the sense that, yes, you have certain specific things you need to accomplish every day. Certain levels of care and attention and responsiveness and compliance to a degree that you have to have every single day. But broad in the sense that you have to look outside of that category to identify those things and those areas and those industries and those people that you can borrow from to improve what you do. The thing you have to remember is that no field is solely about the technical aspects of it. Every field involves a whole range of other skills that are needed to excel at that field. Very often when you meet someone who's a great doctor or a great therapist, what they'll often say is, what a nice person. I like going to that person. I like interacting with that person. That person understands me. All skills that we might think of as soft skills, but vitally important for our own success. I'd like to encourage you to come up with a very specific self-development, self-care, self-focus action plan. What do you need to develop as you know, being a professional. How will you focus your time? And how will you schedule that time and schedule the activities so that you are sure to engage in activities that you know are going to ultimately improve you? If you give it attention, you're gonna become better at it. So if you apply yourself to these ideas, you're gonna be better. We're talking about partnering with each other. We're talking about looking across the room, looking in your phone, looking down the hall, and saying, who do I need to connect with in order to make some substantive changes in what I'm doing and how I'm doing it? And how can I help that person as well? Well, thank you for having me. It's been great being here with you.